Jai Hind, welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achins. A lot is happening in China. One must understand what, why, where, and how, and what are its actual effects. Welcome to this three-part series on understanding the Chinese way, the Chinese line, and the Chinese uh, tendencies to deal with people around the world. We need to know all this stuff because it is important for us to realize how to deal with this particular enemy. In this, the first episode, we will be majorly focusing on the Chinese economy. As you can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, PVSM, AVSM, PSM, a retired Director General from the Artillery Indian, Indian Army, a strategic thinker, a writer, and of course, a speaker. Thank you, sir, for joining me on analyzing and critiquing what we see as the Chinese way. Uh, thanks a lot, Adi, for calling me for this. And I think it's going to be an interesting discussion. Uh, fundamentally, for one reason, why we need this three-episode uh, series is that uh, last year, when the virus came, uh, very few of us thought that China will uh, metamorphize so fast the way it has. And it has come to a stage where it's almost like a U-turn back to its roots, right? And we need to understand this because we are now going to see a new China from now on. The old China from 2000 to 2020, I'm afraid, is vanished. The enemy has changed. We have changed, right? There are many factors to it, and we can, as you rightly said, we'll discuss it, each facet of this factor. But we need we are we're going to deal with a new country virtually, yes. with a new set of policies, and we have to be aware of this whole story as to how to deal with them well. Start indeed, indeed sir. Sir, I you know I'd like to take this moment to say that I was actually going to say, and you've kind of said this that China was an unbeatable force. Um, before the pandemic and there were resistance to China around the world, but nobody kind of took it seriously. It show, it displayed, I would say, on, on a grayscale, its true colors and its instability, its inequality, and now a self-inflicted condition which may result in its recession. Why is something that we need to understand about the Chinese economy, sir? You know, I've also seen one of your articles where you write about the fact that the Chinese knew about what the issues that they're going to face through a report that was done by the World Bank. And this is, you know, almost a decade ago. Is this whole thing self-inflicted? Uh, even if when they knew what was going to happen, they still went ahead with their policies, uh, the demography of the country. How do you see this entire thing opening up, sir? See, first and foremost, uh, whether they are doing it, they are doing it willfully and with their eyes wide open. And they knew all the facts. But let's see what they knew and what is it that the World Bank said. That's the first thing, you know. You know, it was in 2012 that a joint study was undertaken between the World Bank and uh, it's the Development Research Center of the State Council of PRC. That is a government organization. The report was titled China 2030, very interesting, China 2030, building a modern, harmonious and creative society. I mean, it, this report is fantastic. Now, this report, you know, virtually gives a stamp of acceptance to the way China has grown and the role of China in the world affairs, right? It also acknowledges this Chinese performance. It also acknowledges that over 500 million people were lifted out of poverty by China. True. The fantastic, uh, you know, progress made. Uh, the, the risks and challenges of globalization that China took and, you know, uh, succeeded. But in all this, this report identified four challenges which China was to face. Right? And this was in 2012 when Xi Jinping came into power. What are these four challenges? The first challenge was high inequality, which may have worsened now. In fact, it has worsened as per them, as per China. The second challenge was inefficiency in the social service delivery. And this results from uh, you know, distorted incentives, 
and uh, market structures, uh, largely communist oriented, which have not been. Again, it existed. The third challenge was rapid aging of the population. This population problem started in 2000. It started surfacing. Everyone knew it, but it has been swept under the carpet. Mm. Okay. And it was expected that when the population decreases, labor will decrease, cost will increase, all that. Right. The fourth challenge was managing growing economic, social, and cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as this grows, as your economy grows, you have to be outbound and you have to accept people inside, and that would change. But right. And with that would come significant challenges of quality and efficiency in education, health, services, and social security programs. All this was identified. It was not as if it was new. Okay. Right. Now, there was a joint strategy. It's a joint strategy. Mind you, it's not a, it's not a recommendation of World Bank. It was a joint strategy between uh, a government institution of China and the World Bank they said we should have a joint strategy. They said, first, uh, have structural reforms to strengthen the foundations of a market-based economy. Ah. Market-based economy, mm -hmm. which is not happening. Second, accelerate pace of innovation and create an open innovation system. Third, seize the opportunity to go green. Environmental problems are foreseen there and pollution and things like that. Fourth, expand opportunities and promotion, promote social security for all. I mean, this has got directly something to do with aging. Strengthen the fiscal system. Why are banks collapsing? Debt, all those things are foreseen. Sixth, seek mutually beneficial relations with the world. Okay. I mean, let's be very clear. Many of these have not been done. Most of them. Sir. If the uh, most of them have not been done, if these recommendations have uh, had been followed, China would. I mean, the world had no other choice but to accept China as a superpower. Hmm. Okay. True. No. So what is it that has come up? Which is, I mean, you go with the World Bank. You agree to go market, you go to have a beneficial relation, X, Y, Z, as a joint, your joint strategy. What is it in the politics of China and Xi Jinping, which seem to be taking China elsewhere? That's the question. That's the big one. I think you've dropped a bombshell in the answer itself, sir. Uh -huh. uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that, you know, uh, these six... Uh, I won't say recommendations or, you know, something that... Uh, a strategy. Six strategy, points of a strategy. Yeah, strategy. That the Chinese also themselves accept that they had to do. Um, yeah. Pretty much fell on deaf, deaf ears within the leadership of the Chinese. And that's something which is not very surprising. So, I'd like to ask you, you know, when we talk about economy, we mean the money. And one of the biggest things that we see is that the money is vanishing uh, within the Chinese top uh, the strongest industry, which is was the digital space and everything, the money is kind of vanishing. And they call it the common prosperity. What's happening here? And it, my big question that I'd like to ask you is, does the CCP today have a choice not to do this? Or is their own survival at stake with regards to common prosperity? Sir? We have to understand common pr pr prosperity uh, in a slightly different manner. Sure. Whatever the CCP is doing today, they're doing it with the plan. Mm -hmm. Whether that plan is correct or not, we don't know. True. Whether it will succeed or not is, you know, is in the future. But you have to go back a little to understand why they're executing this plan. We said there is a wide inequality, right? So there is some people who have become very rich and the masses are stuck down below. Mm. They are not breaking. Then certain things in the Chinese society have become too costly. It's very costly to raise a child. If it's very costly to raise a child, how can your population not go down? 
right people are old if if people are getting older you need a good health sector right if young people need to go up they have to have a good education sector education cannot become too costly right and they have to be taken away from bad influences like stars you know cine stars and other influences and also they should be taken away from gaming so all these factors go into common prosperity right you can't have you know private corporations uh, getting data and assuming control of the situation hmm assuming state control certain facts you know through their data when people have data they can manipulate it like microsoft google they have data your data my data linkedin you know uh, twitter they have your data because of the data they are able to manipulate us and you know manipulate governments and manipulate xyz now that data in open democratic societies probably is tolerated by democratic governments to go into private hands and you know you have checks and balances within the system to handle it but in a communist country like china data and control can only be with the government they cannot you can't have a competitor from the private sector you know one of the reasons why alibaba was packed up and this has come up in some uh, article which i read that the alipay system was propagating an alternate currency system to the renminbi so as a result monetary control was going fiscal control was going right so that had to be packed off now if your education is very costly the educational tech sector had to be packed off only then education can become costly is cheap and affordable right if you are uh, you know property uh, people all like evergrand and two three more fantasia and all those people are indebted and they can't give apartments to uh, those people who paid money and booked right and that is not uh, taken care of okay then people don't have uh, apartments they don't have places to live uh, x y z i mean that's uh, this thing so they have to be squeezed and china is now grappling with this evergrand business to somehow uh what shall i say uh, uh protect the people who book flats and they, they are not bothered about others investors taking a haircut but people who book flats will get their flat that's what some arrangements are being made of so same way you take the uh, didi which is a ride hailing giant data i mean you go anywhere you see that they are trying to be populist to please the people in some form or the other that look we are chopping down the top and giving it to the bottom it's a robin hood kind of a system <laughs> whether it will succeed i mean let let me put it this way they have culled all the educational uh, giants computer technology and right. educational giants right. now what is the thing in china now people are hiring private tutors to still educate their children and make them competitive which are which is costlier than the earlier one so you still don't have uh, relief for the common man if the common man is not relieved and still education in system in china is very costly where will why should anyone have a second child forget the third child policy which they have now put in. so It, it you know it is zero net zero right so if it is so the solution to this was to reform their education system they have a very competitive education system if that had been reformed then things would have been so they have not they have done something else the opposite so so we don't know what will be the outcomes while seemingly there's a plan but the fundamental plan is populism now in all this xi jinping wants to be the president for life isn't it so he has to be president for life he has to be seen to be doing something for the people so well, the masses. people yeah. masses populism so you do all this then say oh yeah he is very good so let's keep him for life he should be there others are doing nothing 
करप्शन चार्जेस ए बाई ए बी सी बाहर करो जी चिन पिंग फॉर लाइफ पॉपुलिज्म स्टार्ट वेयर दिस विल गो वी डोंट नो इट्स नॉट एट वेरी क्लियर देव लॉस्ट ओवर वन ट्रिलियन डॉलर इन मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन लोन हाउ विल दिस बी मेड अप वी डोंट नो दे मस्ट बी अ प्लान आई मीन आई बीन सेइंग दिस इट एस इट टू मी इट अपियर्स दैट जी चिन पिंग एंड कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी वॉन्ट टू बी रूलिंग चाइना नॉट एज अ सुपर पावर rather they'll be in uh, in power in china which is not a super power then be out of power in a china which becomes a super power doing the right thing hmm. right so that's how it is that's how this common prosperity everything is so again right. my my point that i i you know i i i look at when you when you tell me something like that this seems quite clear and the chinese are not stupid people um they would probably realize the impact on the common man with regards to increasing expenditure with regards to loss of uh, you know investments and so on and so forth to so somebody who's invested in let's say alibaba or bit you know uh, 10 cent for that matter he's going to lose quite a large chunk of his investment yeah but what uh, they are doing is they're taking money from them they all these big corporations are making donations so that that money is then given to the old people their social security etc why you know all those mm. they are trying to generate funds by robbing the rich and paying the poor robin hood interesting is it seems like a matter of survival for them sir so you know yes yes sir so, and you know actually uh, the point is you have to understand if the virus had not come about Yeah. they would have been continually going up and all this problem won't have come up correct because of the virus everyone thought that the virus has not affected china but it has because jobs went out of style they were not there south china morning post has run a series of six articles on jobs and job losses last year and this year separately mm. so there are 12 articles on jo- a lack of jobs in china if there are lack of jobs in china and jobs are going at one third the pay which they were getting earlier and the labor is getting squeezed there is a container problem in the world so their market their goods are not getting exported x y z there is a problem for the people true the common man in china is not a, is not probably half as happy as we think i mean china might be rich but what about the chinese there is a difference which brings me to my next question so as a matter of fact they say that the chinese people have had a deal with the ccp which gives them money a good lifestyle and so on and so forth and they give up their freedom uh you know and i i picked this out of an article that you wrote and i i find this to be very very you know important for us to all understand is that if afghanistan is a clue the americans gave them money the americans gave them education they lifted their standard of living so on and so forth with all that they could not assimilate the afghans together so how long do you think that the chinese would be able to assimilate their own population looking at the divides within the population which are pretty evident to everybody sir see this is the social contract which every communist has had with this population it is not started with china it started earlier even in cuba russia wherever wherever you see chinese communism has come up even in west bengal that is the same we will give you basic thing we will lift you out of poverty x y z we will do land reforms we will do everything and you forget your freedoms it's like a military society even when i joined the armed forces i gave up some of my freedoms sure right for a common cause that's a different thing i'm a military man but what about the common man who's given up a lot of his freedoms his ability to talk free his ability to vote his ability to choose his leader nothing is there right and the social contract is that he gets a good life his life is improved on one thing there is no doubt that china like i said as for the world bank also they have lifted half their population out of poverty and they made it into a reasonably uh, populous uh, i mean prosperous society to the extent that last year xi jinping said that poverty has been eradicated in some china he has made that statement Uh, that is contentious but the fact is that he's had the courage to make that statement but 
the fact is that this equality has widened to such a level that it might corrupt the society and crash the society and especially with the virus i've already spoken of jobs that jobs is one issue from 2000 to 2020 china was an aided economy everyone wanted china to succeed you know so that it became the global engine of economic success today with because of chinese political attitudes and its assertion and aggressive military aggressiveness people have gone against china yeah you'll still de- depend on china and its manufacturing capability and all that but you know very that bri which was supposed to be an outbound uh, thing is you know gone into a debt ridden stuff it has not revived it's not going to get your money back power from those that bri will not affect the common man so there is a problem at the bottom that problem is what is pinching xi jinping and the communist party as a whole there is some kind of a social internal problem happening uh, which we are not able to see because things don't come out right and then there is the pollution there is massive pollution china is a country which is for short of food yeah. pork prices had gone up tremendously last year mm. then there have been floods they don't have energy when you know they don't have coal i mean whether it is by one reason or the other the fact that they not had coal and there are blackouts speaks volumes about what they don't have we all we thought that china is now a land of plenty it is not so these issues are coming out now and if china and its rulers don't attend to these at some stage the people will say take a walk hmm and of course the fact is the fundamental fact which we can discuss in one of our episodes is demography to me that's a fundamental yes that's the baseline for uh, yeah a dwindling set of people will always be poor yes you you bring about very interesting thing as a matter of fact uh, the the you know the so called deal that the chinese have had with their people with regards to the money and the good life if that money is starting to reduce then that deal is kind of broken so yeah it's gone people will tolerate to a certain extent beyond that they'll say okay next yeah see for example uh, i am 65 plus okay uh now if at this the thing i don't have social security i don't have help i don't have some pension from somewhere why would i like any government true mm-hmm. there's no social strict, uh, structure even society doesn't take care of them okay uh, so there is a problem i mean unless uh, that is attained and the number of old people are growing already china is a aged society mm. they got about 18 or 14 to 18 percent of uh, people who are over 65 any country with more than 10 means it's aged now they are hitting the deeply aged society where the number of people who are to support uh, the aged is going down so there is a issue that demography I, i'm sure in one of our episodes yeah, we'll go in detail absolutely yeah. brings me to a simple question sir and probably you know this is the shortest question that i've asked you ever is china racist to a large extent yes i mean it i'm being controversial i know it but i think so look at it from that point one point of view 90% of china is han chinese mm. and they stay in about 40% of the area the balance 60% of the area contains 10% of their population okay till now for 70 years or 60 or 60 to 70 years the zinjiang muslims are not assimilated into china the tibetans are not assimilated the manchurians are not assimilated the mongolians are not assimilated people from hong kong have not been assimilated taiwanese are fundamentally mm. chinese they don't want to be part of china okay so the han chinese have probably shown a trait of not being assimilative with others hmm supremacy sort of a thing hmm. 
whether you call it supremacy racist i don't know ethnic super, you know superiority or it's a clannishness we don't know or is it all this is enforced because of the communist party but fundamentally you call it what you want they have shown an aloofness to assimilate with others so that is yeah they want the demographic of their uh, you know population. their demography they, they don't want to dilute correct interesting so uh, you know finally my last question the cutting down of giants within the chinese economy and especially the 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 digital sector which is the future uh, as per touted by many uh, economists around the world would also lead into a huge amount of investor confidence not just from within china but from abroad as well i mean we see the huge protests that took place for evergrand and so on and so forth just as a small tiny bit of an example 300 billion dollars for a 14 trillion dollar economy seems not much but at the end of it it it, it creates an environment which where people lose confidence now my question is that will china be able to actually fudge the numbers to keep the confidence up just the way that it did to its 40% debt economy within the real estate sector i don't think so but let's view it rationally definitely in investor confidence all over the world has gone if if uh, i mean china has pretty aware of it if mm-hmm. investor confidence in china goes everything goes okay but equally people don't want china to go down because a lot of global growth and economy is tied up with china mm-hmm. okay so if china goes who is the next one who will kick start the economy back is a worry with people so to that extent most of us or the global economy is tied with china okay no confidence there is a debt bubble there is no doubt there is a property bubble there is no doubt confidence like i said is there is not no confidence but do you have an alternative china is riding on this thing that there is no alternative to china today okay and then you have the aging societies in the west who are still dependent on chinese manufacture yeah of course they don't have the manpower to do it mm. right so to that extent the chinese economy will might not collapse but what will happen which is happening and it will happen in the next 5 to 10 years is this that today people might still be dependent on china but not tomorrow hmm they have started why is america trying to give an alternate to belton road or why is australia trying new markets why are new supply chain why is a supply chain resilience in, uh, initiative between australia uh, india and japan coming up why is france struggling why is uh, west germany struggling in the indo pacific to reduce dependencies on china so you got to have fundamental confidence is not there second they are worried that if i invest in china i might not pull out pull out yeah third i don't want to be re- rely on on china because if something happens in china i am sunk so these are questions which are coming up now again before the virus hit nothing none nothing. of these questions absolutely. were on absolutely okay we were very merrily going ahead with uh, the thing today people are asking these questions i mean i'll give you another small thing all of a sudden china has taken a decision that will stop all coal coal fired plants and will not build any more yeah what happens to those countries which are in contracts with china on coal fire coal based uh, power plants they are left without electricity and this is supposed to be their international uh, kind of a policy right so we don't know i mean today that they have come out again you hear reports from china saying no no they are running around for coal so that they can you know yeah. go through the winter so this shakiness has come flip flop you say one thing tomorrow you do the other thing so the confidence is going down people are looking for alternatives 
their own economy is declining their own economy has got problems their very joblessness their, everything is costly in china today okay how long will this imbalance continue they got debt bubbles they got property problems i mean everyone knows there is a debt bubble and a property problem so how long will look china will continue to be one of the leading economies in the world the question is will it be a pri- premier economy will the yuan become a reserve currency do i have the confidence in using yuan as a reserve con- currency if you ask me which government will agree to it not even pakistan not even pakistan you're right forget pakistan next door is cambodia cambodia is actually a chinese hip pocket society even there if you go they want dollar they don't want yuan so unless people accept that yuan as the reserve currency we can keep talking i will not accept it if i will not accept it and a billion more don't accept it gone that's it mm. will the western society accept yuan i mean people are talking of digital yuan xyz but a digital yuan is something or a digital rupee or a digital dollar or a digital mark or a franc will come up in one year down the line that's the end of story everyone is making a move towards it correct see five years back we didn't have so many electronic vehicles or choices tesla was the only one in the world five years down the line everyone is coming out with evs Mm. same thing will happen with uh, digital currency It's so progression people yeah. are looking at alternates if people are looking at alternates will china become will continue to be an economic superpower that's a question it will be a power super is yeah it will be a power there's no doubt interesting i think so we've covered the uh, a nice broad base to start the three episode series of uh, understanding the changes within china and one thing that i must underline uh, which comes out pretty clearly is that the world woke up with the virus so everything kind of happens for a reason and i think uh, you know that 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 particular virus is taught us something if nothing else we must learn the uh, the impact of china on the world we need to realize what uh, yeah yeah there's a lesson no the world woke up with the virus a large part of the world is learning to live with the virus china wants to live without the virus there is a fundamental Different. difference in approach absolutely right. and that is where the actually the gap is widening because of widening uh, see today in india today only i read the paper they say that the third wave will come but it will not be great and they go and all that and yeah but that's not happening other places It's not happening in China. China is still to accept a zero, get off the zero COVID policy. Whereas you started living with it, you're not bothered about the zero COVID. Eh, eh, okay, काम तो फिर भी होगा. It's चल रहा है. Hey, your vaccination is picked up, and no one questions the vaccination. Everything is. Somebody who questions oh. got a kick. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a policy. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a yeah. culture. We are not. We are not talking of Modi government or the Z oh, government. No, no, no. It's, it's a, we are talking of people, culture, or ability to do things our way. Their ability to do their way, and you know, so they're they're they're, they're two diametrically opposite issues. It, it yeah. seems like the Chinese versus the rest of the world. Yeah, that's the their choice. Yeah. No, it's the virus. <laughs> Chinese was the virus. Their way. yeah i mean they, they i think their own creation is is going to sink them and that's yeah. something that people didn't realize before and it's now slowly i guess dawning upon people that, that we can blame them all we want but i think we should be thankful uh for uh, what effect this particular virus has had in china yeah, and I agree. understanding I agree. of the entire nuances has come about so thanks so much i think this has been an eye opener of a discussion especially the factor that uh, world bank has been telling them since 2012 Listen, guys. These are the changes you need to make. But of course, the arrogant China and its arrogant leadership has literally brushed down the carpet as they do to pretty much everything else which happens in their country. Because I guess somewhere down the line, they also think that if you don't talk about it, probably you'll just you know wish away or something like that. Things in real life don't. Thank you so much, sir.
for the next time when we talk about, as you mentioned, the demography, demographic uh, issues within China and the repercussions that it will create for the Chinese economy, for the Chinese people and the CCP. Till next time, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Thank you.